Here's an example for a one sample test, uh, test of the mean. The average commute time in Toronto is 10 years, sorry, the average commute time in Toronto 10 years ago was 45 minutes. In light of urban sprawl and increased traffic congestion, researchers believe that commute times have increased. A random sample of 64 workers found that the mean commute time is now 48 minutes, and the standard deviation from the sample was 8 minutes. Conduct a one sample test for the mean using alpha equals 0 0.05. So even though I said uh, the first step is to state the null and alternative, let's quickly just jot down the meaningful bits of information from the question. Let's do the sample statistics. A random sample of 64 workers, so n equals 64, found that the mean commute time, x bar, equals 48 minutes, and the standard deviation was 8 minutes. So that's what we've gleaned from the sample. What else have we gleaned? From the question, we see that alpha equals 0 0.05. So that's our significance level. In other words, they want to be 95% sure of their test results. The other thing that we see is that the assumption, or the prevailing wisdom about commute times is that the average commute time in Toronto was 45 minutes. So this is going to be used in the null hypothesis. So step one is to state the null and alternative hypotheses. So in this case, the null hypothesis is that average commute time in Toronto, mu, equals 45 minutes. Do we have enough evidence to prove that it's different? The alternative hypothesis can be directional or non-directional. Here, um, it states that researchers believe that commute times have increased, and therefore, we are looking for an alternative hypothesis. Can we prove that mu is, in fact, greater than 45? Has the average commute time in Toronto gone up from 45? So that's the alternative hypothesis. Step two is to choose the test statistic. Our sample size is large, n equals 64, and therefore we're going to use the z-test for uh, one sample difference of means. Okay, step three and I hope I'm getting these steps in the right order. Step three, select the statistical significance. So this is given to us, alpha equals 0 0.05. So in this case, alpha equals 0 0.05. And in step four, we have to delineate the zones of exception and rejection. So here's our curve. First of all, we have to see, is it a non-directional or directional? This is a directional case, and it's a greater than. So in order to prove that mu has increased, we are going to need to find an x-bar out here in the right tail. And therefore, we are going to have a critical value, and it's just a directional case, so there's only one critical value on the right tail, and this is going to be z crit. What is this critical value going to be? We know that alpha equals 0 0.05, in which case we are going to have 5% of the area in the tail. So we can use table, the table of normal probabilities in order to find 45% over here, or as a shortcut, we can use the confidence interval table, this table, and we're using, uh, we're finding a z-score, so we are finding the bot, we're using the bottom row of this table, a t-distribution with infinite degrees of freedom, and we are going to use the 90% confidence level, 1.64. Now that might be confusing for some of you, because this, the significance level is 5%. So a lot of you will be thinking, why aren't we using the 95% level of confidence? And the answer is that 
With levels of confidence, these are all assuming two-tailed, two-tailed levels of confidence. So in other words, if we select a 90% level of confidence, that's going to put 10% in two tails. So it's going to put 5% in one tail and 5% in the other tail. If you look at our picture, that's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for 5% to be in this tail over here. In that case, we need to use the 90% level of confidence. If we use the 95, well, that would be a test that put 2.5% in each tail. That would be a test that put, with a critical value, say, over here, with that being equal to 2.5%. Oh boy, I did not want to do that. Let me try to regain some semblance of what we had. Okay, good. So here's our Z-crit. We just found out that the Z-crit is 1.64. Step five is to compute the Z-score. So Z equals x bar minus mu h over the standard error of the mean. x bar was 48 minus 45. And the standard error of the mean is s over root n. 8 over root 64, which is just 8. So this is equal to 3. Let me make sure I've got the numbers right. 64s, yep. Okay. So the z score, right, the z score is equal to 3. Where's 3 on this curve? 3 is somewhere way out here in the right tail. z equals 3. The z test equals 3. Is that in the zone of rejection or the zone of acceptance? Anything out here to the right, more extreme than the critical value, is by definition in the zone of rejection. And therefore, step six is to say, reject the null that mean commute time equals 45 in favor of the alternative that mean commute times have increased. Okay, increased.